Hello, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you what you can do with a half-inch spindle gouge. Uh, that's a half-inch flute. If I had only, we will say if I was allowed only one tool um, and I had to pick just one, uh, this would be the tool, half-inch spindle gouge. And you'll see me using it uh, to rough down blanks, to cut beads and coves, on both spindles and face work and you'll also get to see uh, me turning this teen little spindle all with the one tool. So we'll start off with this gouge which has a uh, it's around uh, 24 25 degree bevel um, I've got a little gauge here which I'm not sure where I got it from but uh, that tells me this is just uh, very slightly steeper than 22 degrees and it has a long bevel uh, so that I can get into corners. Now with this tool um, it's designed primarily for doing coves. So we come in from either side But you can also, because of the length of the bevel, you can also, to some extent, do grooves. Now there are better tools for doing this, but this is a video basically about what you can do with a half inch spindle gouge. A better tool for doing grooves is a skew chisel because it can get into much tighter spaces than this. Or a detail gouge which has a shallower flute and can get into tighter spaces. But for very basic spindle work This is a very useful tool. The beads. I can use this same tool to rough down this 90 millimeter square of uh, elm, dry elm. It's about three and a half inches. that pretty efficiently. Use the same gouge to rough down branches. This is a piece of uh, claret ash which has been cut uh, I think for about eight months. As I come back, I don't use the point of the tool, just swing the tool around a bit so we've got the broader edge. That gets a better wider shaving going in the other direction. Still got some bark to come off. And this is going to go into a chuck. Uh, to show you some end grain hollowing with the same tool or a slightly different one in fact. This would do it but there's a better version. So Use this to true up the end grain. And I'd like to get a small shoulder on this. Go into the chuck. 
I use the wing of the tool as a peeling cut. Oops, me being a little bit careless. And I want to have, this is end grain. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of support with this shoulder up against the chuck jaws. Still the same gouge with the 25 degree bevel. Facing off the end grain. Now when it comes to hollowing it into end grain, I've got several options. I can hollow as you might a bowl going in from the rim. technique which I never use which I notice a lot of people do where you can drag the left wing out it's vibrating because I'm hanging quite a long way out of the chuck yeah? whenever you get vibration you just have to go slow so those are two ways of getting in onto end grain. I personally prefer the back hollowing. Which with this tool, go into the middle and out the other side. Well, there's a separate video on that. Now this is slightly easier uh, I find with a slightly different grind. Take this off. And I have a tool with slightly steeper bevel. This is much nearer uh, 40 degrees and I've taken a, a bit off this shoulder here. Just need to get rid of this. an asymmetric grind which means that up on the you see I have a, a long left wing a much steeper uh, and shorter right wing uh, which just takes a, a better shaving I find anyway so this now goes into the middle wrong tool that hasn't got as enough off that little section. So I've been to the grind and taken off this big lump of metal. And then that corner doesn't get in the way. Now if you want to go small and delicate uh, you can do that with this tool. So this is the same, uh, the long bevel, 20, uh, about 25 degree. What you do need is reasonable eyesight. Half-inch spindle gouge, a very useful tool for spindle work, uh, but I find it 
equally useful on bowls. This is a fairly new gouge uh, which um, has a 35 degree bevel on it. Um, the right wing uh, hasn't yet shortened quite as much as uh, uh, I'll have it uh, when it's ground back a bit but primarily I'm using the, uh, the left wing here widely held myth that uh, you should never use a spindle gouge on face work. Uh, that is complete rubbish as you can see. Um, what you should not use on face work uh, is a deep fluted spindle roughing gouge which is the big half U one. I can't show you one because I don't use them. So in this case I can take a roughing cut just using near the nose of the tool the shaving gets away really quickly because of the open flute uh, and then I can take a shear cut with the bevel rubbing That's a 35 degree bevel. You do this with the, the the 25 degree bevel, the angle of approach here is much trickier. Which is why I have a steeper bevel. This one is much nearer 45 degrees. The advantage of this tool is if I want to do any kind of a cove, I can get around with the with the bevel rubbing. Not comfortable, but it can be done. The rest could have been a little bit further around there. Just do it again. clean surface. With a longer bevel, now back to the 25 degree, bring the tool in on its side. And I can cut beads with it. Now that is a video on how to cut these, so I won't go into it here. And finally, a uh, half inch spindle gouge hollowing a small bowl. Uh, not really recommended for much larger bowls because there isn't the strength in the tool. That's why you have deep fluted bowl gouges. But this is on this scale, which is, uh, this one is, uh, just 
four and a half inches, which is about uh, 1200 mil. So this is the one I was back hollowing with. Got a 35 degree bevel up on uh, above where I took the whole of the corner off. I'm going with the much longer bevel, this is the 22 degree. The problem with the longer bevel is that you can't get round tight corners, so you need the steeper bevel, which is uh, the one I have on this gouge, which I suspect is near a 45. Uh, it'll be about 40 degrees. I can keep the bevel rising on this one all the way round. Not my preferred way of making bowls because I normally use scrapers. Or at least I use scrapers across the bottom. Once again, the three gouges we have. Uh, this was mostly used for the spindles. It's got a long, a long bevel on it, about 25 degrees. A uh, little bit short on the right wing. If you were using it entirely for spindle work, then you would be grind this back more to a fingernail grind. The gouge I used to hollow into end grain, or my favourite gouge with. Uh, a chunk ground away here just to make the uh, the gouge cut more efficiently as it hollows and with a very short right wing so the full asymmetric grind main thing with these is these have got a full curve they're not straight and finally the gouge with a much steeper bevel and that is so that I can get round from the rim right into the base of uh, small bowls so I hope you get the message that I regard these as absolutely essential tools and uh, ideally I suppose you have two or three so you can have different bevels on each one.